Saches Ksubis Daf Tzadi Tes is a second version of our previous Gemara, a question that was asked and a number of proofs. So here we'll have a second version, a slightly different question and slightly different proofs. So in our last version we had asked what happens when someone sends a messenger to go purchase a half a core of land and he goes and he purchases a whole core. Does that count as if he did his job, at least in the half core? Now we have the opposite version. He sent someone to go buy a whole core, and he purchases half a core. So we say as follows. If he would have sent him to buy half a core, and he bought a whole core, say so he did his job, he can't back out, the Mishaleach can't back out, and he did even more than his job. Now, our question here is where he sent him to buy a whole core and he went and he bought a half a core do we say that this half at least he did he did half the job and the mishalach can't back out or do we say you know this is not the job at all and the mishalach can say that's not what i asked you to do and your sale is not chal at all what's the two sides so on the one hand the shalach could argue i did something which is good for you had you suddenly needed money and you decided you didn't want to do this deal i gave you the option to not have to do the full deal you only have to do half the deal on the other hand, perhaps the Balabais can say, you messed me up because now I have to sell to two different people and two different contracts. I don't want multiple contracts. I don't want multiple deals. I wanted it to be simple with one deal. Someone says, okay, let's bring a proof. So our first proof is also going to be from a case where a Balabais sent someone to do a shlichos and he didn't do it exactly right. And it turned out that what was purchased was me'ila. And the Baisa says they're both ma'al. The case there is where he told the guy to go buy a chaluk Go buy a cloak for one din or zav, which is equal to six slime. He sent him to spend the six slime to buy a chalak worth six slime. The guy went and he bought a chalak worth three slime, and he also bought a talus worth three slime. So he spent all six, but the chalak was only worth three, and then he bought a whole other talus that he hadn't asked him to. So the law is that they're both chayav me'ila. And if they're both chayav me'ila, then again, of course, the chayav me'ila means that what he bought turned out to have belonged to hektish. With the money that he spent turned out to have been hectic. So they're both Chayav Me'ila. So why? If he didn't do the job that he was supposed to do, why should the Baal Ba'is be Chayav Me'ila? What he had, what actually happened, was not his messaging at all. So obviously, it is considered as if he did the Shlichus of the Baal Ba'is, and the Baal Ba'is is purchase of the chalok is me'ila because it is he has completed the job itself so you see that it is chal to that extent so the gemara says no perhaps this is not comparable to our case at all because perhaps he did the exact shlichus what did the guy send him to do he sent him to buy a chalok worth six slime he went and he bought a chalok worth six slime he got it for three slime so he did the job exactly as it was meant to in our case he didn't do the job. He sold. He sold only half the land. He didn't sell the full amount of land he told him to sell. So Gemara says, hold on a second. You want to tell me that our case is that he did the exact job. So then why is the shliach mal? What did he do wrong? He did the exact job. He just fulfilled the shlichus of the Baal Ba'is. He didn't do anything on his own. Gemara says, that's true as far as the chalok. He bought a chalok worth six slime, exactly as he was told to. He only spent less, but he bought the chalok worth six slime. There's no mila for that. The mila is for the fact that he went and bought the talus. What business did he have buying the talus that he did on his own? And for that, there's me'ila. Something where I was like, gosh, hold on a second. You want to tell me that he spent six, that he bought a chalok worth six slime, which is what he was supposed to do, and he spent only three. So then how do you understand the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda? Rabbi Yehuda argues on the opinion, on the on the first opinion we saw in the Brisa, and Rabbi Yehuda says the Baal Ba'is is not the Ma'al, because the Baal Ba'is will say, you didn't do my job. You went and you bought me a small and a bad chalok. That's not what I wanted. So obviously, small and bad chalok means that I asked you to buy one for six, and you bought one for three. Obviously, it wasn't one worth six. So the Gemara says, no, it really it was one worth six. What he meant to say was you could have bought a better one. You spent less money. I wanted you to spend six. I didn't want you to buy one worth six. I wanted you to spend six. And if you could get a better deal and you could get one worth six for three, so then spend six and buy me one that's worth 12. And in Kalvah Homer, if you could get one that's worth six for three, you could get one that's worth 12 for six because the more material and the bigger you buy, the more the price drops per unit because people People sell in bulk. And therefore, that is his complaint. Not that you bought a too small thing, but that you didn't spend enough. I wanted you to spend the full six. Now, the Gemara says, I'll prove to you that this is what Rabbi Huda really holds because Rabbi Huda agrees to the Tanakama in a place where it was beans that he was asking him to buy and not a chalok. 
that there they are both mul because there he did do the job of the ball bias. And the reason must be because beans are sold the same amount whether you sell a lot or you sell a little. And therefore he couldn't possibly have been upset at him for not spending enough. Because I, who says that if he would have spent more, he would have gotten the same ratio of more amount. It could be that he, for the same price, he would have spent more. He would have not gotten more because over there, the way beans are sold is you, you don't get a cheaper price if you buy more. So um, that must be, that's the reason why that case is different. Now, Gemara says that of Papa explains we're talking about in a place where they sell it measure by measure. And therefore, it doesn't matter how many measures you buy, for each measure you, you pay the same price. If, however, they sell it in an estimation in a large amount and you take a larger container, then you pay less. So there, Rabbi Huda would say that the price would have been less per unit had he bought more and he should have bought the, he should have spent what I told him to spend instead of spending less. I wanted him to spend that amount. So Zumar, okay, now we have a proof from our Mishnah. Our Mishnah had a case where an almona went and sold her husband's property in order to collect the ksuba worth 400 zuz. And over there, she sold it in four different sales, 100, 100, 100, and the last one was 101. So the case in the Mishnah was how was she allowed to sell 101, but let's look at something else. Her sales were all chal. The Mishnah says the first three sales were fine. What do you mean? She was supposed to sell 400 zuz worth. That's how much her ksuba was. Instead, she sold 100 and 100 and 100. So she sold it in smaller pieces. Well, why is she allowed to do that? Obviously, selling less than she was supposed to sell is still how that amount. Mar says no. Who told you that we're talking about where she sold one field worth 400 in four different pieces? Maybe she had four different fields to sell. She took four different fields, each each worth of money, and she sold them in four different units. That is how she was supposed to sell. She wasn't supposed to sell it in one large amount, having one person buy all four fields. That was never part of her mission. Now, the Umar talks about the same situation, but where the person sent him with more specific instructions. So if he said to him, sell my field to one person and not to two, then certainly the shleach is not allowed to go divide it up into two separate sales, because he clearly said one and not to two. The question is, what if he said sell it to someone, sell it to one person, and he didn't say and not to two? So, said sell it to one and a person, that's just how people talk, and he doesn't really care how many people you'll sell it to, or he also meant sell it to one and not to two. So, the master says, Machlokas, according to Rav Huna, he was mocked, but only to one and not to two. According to Rav Chizda and Rabba Bar Rav Huna, he just spoke Stam, that's the people talk, he could sell it to two people, he could sell it to a hundred people. The Gemara brings an incident that happened. The Gemara says when Rav Nachman came to Sura, Rav Chizda and Rabbi Bar Huna, the ones who said that it makes no difference how many people you sell to in that case, they went to him and they asked him in this case, what's the halacha? And he agreed with them. He said the halacha is you can sell it to one, you can sell it to two, you can sell it even to a hundred. So they said, does that same halacha hold true if the shliach sold it for too little money? If he uh, did a bad job selling the land and he lowered the price too much? So he said, no, in that case, I'm not referring to. In that case, it's canceled. The shliach made a mistake. It's not chal. So they asked him, but you said there's no halach of ono when it comes to land. Ono is if you sold something for too much or too little. If the difference between the real price and what you sold it for is too great, it's canceled. But that halach doesn't apply to land. So he said, it's true, that halach doesn't apply to land, but that's when the Baal Bayis himself sells it, because there the only issue was ono. Here, He's a shliach of the owner, and the owner could say, I did not sell, I did not send you to hurt me. I did not send you to undervalue and undersell my property by that much, and therefore it is canceled, it doesn't work. So we're asked, how do you know that there's a difference between the shliach and the babais himself? Who's, who says that there's such a svara? So it brings a proof from a Mishnah. Somebody says to his messenger, go and take truma for me. And so he should go, he should take the amount of truma that he thinks that the Baal would have wanted to take himself. Truma, there's a range how much you can give. The standards are a 40th, a 50th, or a 60th. So he should assume, he should try to figure out what he knows the guy would have wanted to give, and that's what he should give. If he doesn't know, he should do the middle. He should do the 1 50th, which is the middle amount. If he did a 40th or a 60th, it's also good. It also works. Now, if he does more than a 40th or a 60th, that, the implication is clear, is no good. However, the Lacha says straight out that the Baal buys himself. If he were to take off even a 20th, that's how it becomes Truma, and if that's what ended up in his hand, he can't put it back. So you see that there are different Lachos for the Baal buys himself and for the Mishalach. On the Mishalach, he can't be off by too much. We can cancel it. 
Gemara now again brings a proof from the case of the Almona who sold the land at 400 Zuz for 100, 100, 100. And over here, we should claim on behalf of the Yisomim that he's Makbid. So you see that we're not making the claim that he's Makbid. Obviously, you don't assume that there is Kapeda if you don't know for sure. So Gemara says again, the answer is we're talking about four separate pieces of land, and therefore there's nothing to discuss as far as Kapeda goes. There's no other way to sell it. Now we begin our next Mishnah. The Mishnah discusses what happens if we evaluated property for Yisomim or for uh, to sell from the husband, and we evaluated it wrong. So Mishnah brings a machlok. It's going to the town of Kama. If it's off by more than six, this sale is void, just like the rules of Hina. Rav Shem ben Gamil says, no, we have to defend the practices of the Beisdin, and therefore it's chal and it counts even if you're off by more than a sixth. Now, if we did an auction and we left it open to the public to bid, then whatever comes out, that's the correct value. And we don't say that it's off. So even if you sold for twice as much or half as much, it's still chal the sale completely.